morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another episode of Complex Numbers But Different. It's finally getting kind of exciting, okay? Today we would like to show that our set of complex numbers in matrix form is indeed isomorphic to the R2. So all the two by one matrices, so two entry vectors with real number entries. Okay, this is R2 by definition. And what an isomorphism is we are going to talk about in a few minutes and what it has to do with anything, why we are doing this abstract stuff. But at first I would like to show, talk about why our C is going to form a vector space because our R2 is indeed a vector space. Okay, R2 is by definition R to the nth power is indeed a vector space. You can check this for yourself using this stuff right here. Okay, all those vector space axioms. And once we have found this out, we can actually check if we have a vector space isomorphism between those two. Okay, it's going to be really important. Bear with me. At first, I would like to go verbally through everything. We have two operations times and plus, okay, I'm going to denote them like this. And we have that our times is just defined as a scalar multiplied by a matrix, in this case, if we are dealing with our C. Also, we have our plus being defined point-wise. This is just a matrix plus another matrix, okay? V cross V mapped to our vector space yet again, to our, yeah, to our C in this case. At first, with regards to our plus operation, addition, we have the associativity. And the thing is, it's really quite trivial to check all of those properties because our complex numbers are defined using real number entries and in the real numbers, they also form a vector space. All of this stuff actually holds already, so everything gets in, in use. But I hope you can see that it's associative. A plus B in parentheses plus C is the same as A plus parentheses B plus C, okay? Also, addition is a bellion. We have real number entries, so a plus b is the same as b plus a. I hope you agree. Also, there does exist a certain matrix, the zero matrix, the null matrix, which has the property that zero plus a is the same as a plus zero is the same as a, okay? It's just the complex number zero, 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 and if you add this thing to anything, it's just going to be the matrix in itself. And for each and every matrix, you have an inverse, meaning A minus A is going to result exactly in our null matrix. Yes, okay, does work out for each and every real number that does exist an additive inverse. Coolio. Now for the multiplication properties, okay? Lambda is here just a scalar, okay? For example, the number pi, okay? It's a really cool number, number three. And we have the associative property on scalars, but they are out of the real numbers, so this actually holds. So hey, this is not easy to, um, uh, not hard to verify. Now we have one times a is equal to a. Okay, if you take the real number one, it's the multiplicative identity, so it does work out. Okay, coolio, we have done that, and also we have the distributive laws, which are really easy to verify. Okay, if we have lambda times a plus b, it's the same as lambda times a plus lambda times b. You just drag the lambda into the point-wise addition of those two and then you track stuff um, to the outside, okay, using the distributive laws and the real numbers, etc. With this out of the way, we can actually get started, okay? So C forms a vector space, you can prove this formally, it's really easy, okay? It's just the stuff right here, checking on all of those properties. Now, C being isomorphic to our R2 does mean the following. If we have a vector space isomorphism between two sets, this basically just means that we can take an element here, give this element a new name. For example, we are going to turn this into a vector and this new representation is actually equivalent to our old representation that we have. Meaning, in interpreting matrices, geometrically is kind of weird, it doesn't make too much sense, but if we were to show that there's a vector space isomorphism between those two, we can translate our matrix into a vector and vectors are really easy to handle. We can even use Papa Pythagoras on vectors, okay? And many properties of complex numbers are going to make so much sense if you take a look at them geometrically. 
This is why we are going to try to give our complex matrices, okay, our complex numbers a new name and then we can deal with vectors and find out some properties. For example, what does the determinant have to do with our complex numbers? What's the meaning of the determinant? I said before that it's really important. Hmm, who knows? We're going to give it a shot. At first, for something to be an isomorphism, we first have to check that there's a mapping which is a homomorphism between those two. Okay, meaning we are going to define ourselves a T, that's a linear mapping, okay, um, from C to R2. And what we basically want to check is that it's additive and homogeneous, meaning T of lambda, okay, we are going to take the matrices here, lambda A plus lambda prime, A prime, is going to be the same as lambda T of A plus lambda prime T of A prime. This is what we are going to show, okay? We want to show that this thing is indeed a linear mapping, okay? Yeah, we are just going to go through the process. A is going to be defined as A negative B, B and A, and A prime is C negative D, D and C, okay? And lambda and lambda prime are simply scalars. For example, the number pi, okay? But this has to hold for all the scalars and all the matrices that we actually have. Now, that's the basically homomorphism thing right here. Okay, this is just checking for homomorphism. Linearity is basically in vector spaces just a homomorphism. Meaning, we are going to check T of lambda A plus, um, and terribly sorry, A minus B, B and A plus lambda prime and then C negative D, D and C. Now, Scalar multiplication is defined point-wise. We have a vector space right here. This is cool. Also, addition is defined point-wise then. Meaning, if we were to bring all of this together, we are going to end up with T of... Okay, now we are going to have a matrix lambda A plus lambda prime C. Okay, this is the first entry. And down here, we are going to have uh, lambda B plus lambda prime D. And also, we are going to have... Um, negative and negative, okay, we are going to have negative lambda b plus lambda prime d and also we are going to have lambda a plus lambda prime c and this is it. Now we are going to use our linear mapping right here, okay, on our matrix that we have in here. But what exactly is our linear mapping? We have a mapping from c to R2. Let us define this a bit better, okay? Let us take a look how our R2 actually looks like. Our R2 is the set of all the vectors A and B, such that A and B are element of the real numbers, okay? This is our R2. It's a simple enough definition. Meaning it would make sense to define our T of some matrix A, negative B, B and A as follows. It's just going to map to our vector AB. Okay, this is our T right here and we are now going to use it on what we have right here. Meaning what we do, we are going to check for the entries. Okay, those are equal and those are basically equal with a shifted sign. Okay, and we can just map it to the vector AB. Meaning we are going to end up with lambda A plus lambda prime C and also lambda B plus lambda prime D. Now, R2 forms a vector space, meaning we have all those nice properties. We can drag stuff to the outside, bring scalars to the outside. Everything that is really nice with vectors holds here, okay? It's a vector space, it's a really cool thing. So we are going to have lambda A, B plus lambda prime C, D. And by definition, A and B can be mapped backwards to our T of a minus B, B and A, which was T of A in the first place, or which would be T of A, and also our C and D would be mapped back to T of C, negative D, D and C, which is T of A prime. Meaning we are going to end up with lambda T A plus lambda prime T A prime, which is what we wanted to show. We have shown this property, meaning we have a linear mapping, meaning overall that at the moment we have a vector space homomorphism. And now we want to get the iso to the morphism, okay? A homomorphism is an isomorphism if it's a bijective homomorphism, okay? Bijective means it's one-to-one -one and onto, or if you want to be more precise, it's supposed to be surjective and injective, meaning it's bijective. At first we are going to check for the injection, meaning what you want to show in a normal case if we have T of or if you check for an injection in general, we have F 
of A being equal to F of B, for example, this implies that A is equal to B. But in linear algebra, there's a way stronger statement that you are going to use in function analysis, for example, all the time. Injection is equivalent to the statement that the kernel of a linear mapping is indeed just trivial. Okay, it's simply the set of all the identities in there of this certain operation. Meaning we are going to take a look at the kernel, kernel Sanderson, the kernel of T in this case is simply at first by definition the set of all matrices that satisfy our homogeneous equation. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do some more linear algebra here, okay, a bit more advanced stuff. So this is just a set of all A negative B, B and A. Okay, we are going to take the stuff from the left hand side such that T of A is equal to, well, the homogeneous solution, okay? The trivial solution right here. Meaning, if we were to plug in T of A, T of A is T of this matrix, meaning it's going to map to A and B. Now, this thing right here is exactly the null vector. And two vectors are indeed equal, if and only if their entries are equal and their dimension is equal. Meaning, overall, a must be equal to zero and we have B must be equal to zero. Meaning overall that thus we only have the set of the matrix 0, 0, 0, 0, which is indeed the set which only has the identity in it. Meaning our kernel is indeed trivial, meaning overall that we have simply an injection. Our mapping is injective. Okay, I hope this wasn't too much input. Take a look at Brilliant. It's a really nice website. Not sponsored by Brilliant at the moment, but it's a really nice website. Check it out. Okay, now for the search activity, what you want to show basically if we have f of y, uh, f of x being equal to y, for the search activity, what you want to have is that we have for all y element of, I'm going to call it r2 right now. Okay, the thing we are mapping to. There does exist some x element of c such that we have f of x is equal to y. Okay, now we are only going to plug shit in. So we are going to modify this a little bit. Let's say x is just some random matrix and our f in this case is our t, meaning t of a is equal to, well, t of this matrix yet again, but we know what this is going to map to, namely a, b. And we are done. I, I hope this does make sense why we are done now. This simply means that the image of our mapping, of our linear mapping is basically simply our whole R2 and this already makes us subjective. And I hope this does make sense. So it doesn't matter which matrix X or A or whatsoever we are going to choose. No matter which X we plug into here, we are going to end up with vector AB. So for all vectors a b we can find a certain matrix such that this holds is it just follows from the fact that this mapping is defined point wise and that we are just going to map the points to the entries in the vector and thus it's surjective meaning overall that it's bijective meaning we have a vector space isomorphism meaning we can uh, we can take each and every matrix right here give it a new name namely a and B, okay, as a vector, and then we can work with it. And the geometric interpretation of this vector is equivalent to the geometric interpretation of our matrix. And just as a little math nut at the end, if we were to take a look at the vector, okay, if we have a complex matrix right here, complex number, we are going to map it to A, B. And if we simply have a vector, we can actually interpret this. This right here is our vector AB at the moment. And one cool thing is we have a certain angle right here, phi. Also, this vector has a certain length r. And this length, for example, is by Papa Pythagoras just a squared plus b squared, so the length squared. But a squared plus b squared is exactly the determinant of our matrix a squared minus negative b squared. a squared plus b squared is r squared. Isn't that interesting? So basically the length of our matrix is exactly our determinant. This is really curious, okay? But this for another episode. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and recommend channel. Like if you want to support channel a bit more, buy those t-shirts I create or support channel on Patreon. Until the next video, have a complex day. See ya, ciao.